Welcome to the celebration of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. We invite you to join in prayer with your Catholic neighbors and friends as we celebrate the Eucharist. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Peace be with you. My brothers and sisters, today we celebrate um, the Wednesday of the fifth week of Easter, but we also celebrate today the memorial of the appearance of Our Lady um, at Fatima. And uh, remember that, so our opening prayer will remember the appearance of Mary at Fatima. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Peace be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we gather to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who chose the mother of your Son to be our mother also, grant us that persevering in penance and prayer for the salvation of the world, we may further more effectively each day the reign of Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by, by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and presbyters about this question. They were sent on their journey by the church and passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, telling of the conversion of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the brethren. When they arrived in Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church, as well as by the apostles and the presbyters, and they reported what God had done with them. But some of the party of the Pharisees who had become believers stood up and said, it is necessary to circumcise them and direct them to observe the Mosaic law. The apostles and the presbyters met together to see about this matter. The word of the Lord, and thanks be to God. Our response, let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoice because they said to me, we will go up to the house of the Lord and now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem, Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity, to it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decrees for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord, in it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Remain in me as I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me will bear much fruit. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. And glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does not, that, 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 and every one that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. 
Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire where they will be burned. If you remain in me and my word remains in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I know for many of us it's kind of well known or something that's very normal for us to stand up at mass and pronounce the creed, whether the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed. It lists out all the things that we believe, kind of the core teachings of the church in some ways. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And all those words that go along in the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed. Some words, if you look at them, we say them sometimes without thinking. We wonder why are they in there? You know, uh, through him, it, it, you know, one God begotten, not made, one in being with the Father, through him all things were made. Why is that all in there? Well, it's the, really the way, kind of the way dogma and teaching develops. And we're seeing it kind of come to life in the Acts of the Apostles right here, and even before now. Today we have a controversy brewing. We had the first controversy, of course, which was not controversy, but problem. That was, we saw that, the feeding of the people, the distribution to the widows was not being done fairly, they thought, or some were being neglected. And so they got together and created, in a sense, called forth men to serve as diaconia, servant, service, to, to the ministry of service to those in need, to make sure that what was taken up as a love offering, you might say, or a charitable offering, could be given then to those in need fairly and equally. And so the apostles felt we need some help. So they, so they called forth men to be deacons, what we now call deacons, diaconia, serve, that, the ministry of service. But today another deeper problem comes. Now, why is it a problem? Well, mainly because what happened, and this is put it, to put it very, I put kind of colloquially, but church was going along fine. They kind of got the basic thing. Then Jesus said, you know, do this in remembrance of me. But they were Jews at their heart, so they would go to the temple and they would say the prayers. And then they would come and gather as this, the band of followers of Jesus who were celebrating the breaking, telling the story of Jesus, handing on the, the teaching of Christ, teaching of the church, uh, and also gathering together for the breaking of the bread. But they still had that one foot in the temple, one foot in their Jewish faith, seeing this as a continuation. In some ways, some of them probably thought, we will renew the whole Jewish faith and under the rabbi, under Jesus, the one who died and rose from the dead. They even had some priests we see in today's gospel, first reading, that had come over and were beginning to become believers, still having that kind of rank as a priest within the Jewish faith something that they treasured and some probably demanded some respect for. But now they began to preach to Gentiles. Paul and Barnabas had reached out and they were preaching to those who were not Jews. And they were being brought into the church. They were believers in Jesus Christ. They had received the Holy Spirit. And now all of a sudden, they, the, the Jewish priests, they were the ones that were kind of coming in to the fold here, um, said, no, wait, if they're going to become part of us, they have to be circumcised. Why? Because they still felt this connection with the Jewish faith. And so if you're going to come and be initiated into the teaching of Jesus Christ, you had to come through the Jewish faith. You had to come through the chosen people to fully be initiated into the church of Jesus Christ. 
So in a sense, colloquially, you could put it this way. The church was kind of going along, and they just were living the faith they had, had been handed on to, us, to them without any kind of, kind of reflection. They were living it, just doing it, being the church. And then all of a sudden, a problem comes, or someone stands up and says, no, these men need to be circumcised. And all of a sudden they go, wait, wait a minute, wait. Is that what we believe? Is that who we are? And it says the apostles and the presbyters met together to see about this matter. And we're going to see that story uh, unfold for us over the next few days. And it unfolds in the Acts of the Apostles. Because they weren't sure. Someone had stood up and said something that, wait, we're not sure we believe that. So it forced them to kind of think about what do we really believe? And of course, the ultimate decision was, and you'll see it later on, not to give, the, not to give it away, but you know, the, is that no, they do not have to be circumcised. And they began to take one more step away and make that break with their Jewish origins. Not breaking that they were of Jewish origin, that we have our roots in the chosen people who brought about uh, the birth of our Savior, but broken by that they would see that being a Christian had a fundamental difference in it than being a Jew waiting for the Messiah. For the Christians, the Messiah had come. And something new is being created here. That would have been revolutionary to many of the people that were following Jesus. Maybe some left after that. No, 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 I'm not leaving my Jewish faith. I thought this was kind of a, a side thing. It was still connected. They may have lost followers, but they began to define themselves as they began to reflect on what Jesus said. And they said, no, this is not who we are. That's the way the gospel is really in our own lives, too. We become a follower of Jesus. We become Catholic. And we live our lives without thinking about something. And then all of a sudden someone says, did you know that I heard that uh, it's, that's a sin to do that? You go, what? What does that mean? No, 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 that's, you're wrong. And then we do some study. We do some praying. We do some reflection. We think, oh, wow, this, is, this isn't right. This is not good. Jesus says that we are the vine, he is, he is, the, he is the vine master, and he comes to him, and we are part, we are connected to the vine, to the, we, Jesus is the vine and we are the branches, but he's the one that prunes us. In all these different moments of the church's change and understanding of itself, it were being pruned down to that one vine of Jesus Christ. And the branches then began to bear more and more fruit as they became more and more understand, understanding of who they were and what their mission was. But we'll see that this is how all church teaching has been developed over the years in many ways. The church went along for a long time and then someone stood up and said, oh, you know what, I don't think Jesus was really God. And they go, what, no, 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 uh, no, he was God. And they, had to, they reflected on why they argued about that. They even pu pulled in philosophical language to try to define more clearly what they really meant. So then in our creed it says now, true God from true God, begotten not made, one in being with the Father, connecting Jesus Christ as that third person of the Blessed Trinity. So our de it develops in these moments of crisis where the church has to define who it is. Kind of in many ways, we're kind of in one of those crises right now, trying to define who we are when our, when our normal way of living has been so disrupted. Maybe some of us have, have kind of been pruned a little bit and have discovered prayer in our life in a different way. We've been pruned down to see that well, we can't go to mass, but we can reach out in charity to others. So that has become a more dominant part of our faith. It's coming alive, it's bearing fruit. We've been pared down to be with our family and, and realize that we need to pay more attention to the, our loved ones. Crisis, God continues to work in us. As long as we stay connected to that vine, then we can do great things. We can produce much fruit. The church over the years has been pruned down to understand who it really is, who we are, what we believe. And even in this crisis, we're being asked to kind of be pruned a little bit, let go of things that were superficial. Wonder why we ever did that in the first place simplify our lives maybe and find that we can get by on a pound of beans quite nicely. Especially if you know how to make pasta vazul, you know, pasta and beans. 
And so, a good Italian dish. And so let us pray that God will give us that grace during this time, that we will watch as the church develops how it's been shaped and formed by crisis and moments when it has to redefine itself and go back to its roots. And that we are also oftentimes called to do that as well. And I think one of these times is now to capture the heart of our faith that sustains us, even when we're separated from the Eucharist, sustains us in that hope. May God bless us all in this, in this endeavor that we allow the good vineyard master to prune us during this time so we might bear much fruit. Confident of God's mercy and love, we offer these prayers of petition. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and that God will continue to bless him and uh, be a strength to him in this time of difficulty and crisis in the church. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those who are our loved ones. Let us pray for God that he will bless them and keep them safe, especially those that we cannot make contact with or are far from us today. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of our graduates who are over the next few weeks having a, some kind of graduation, that God will give them their due through some kind of celebration and allow them to go forth with a sense of hope for the future. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for those intentions we hold in our heart today that we bring to mass, that we will carry with us during this day for loved ones, for ourselves, for particular needs, for particular graces that we ask for, that God will hear and answer our prayers today. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have died, that God will give them eternal rest and peace. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear the prayers we place before you. For we pray them faithfully through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who bought, grant we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the, hall, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful, for his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing to gather the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church throughout the world by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may, come to an, we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer to each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Persons who are unable to receive the Eucharist are urged to unite themselves spiritually with Christ's sacrifice. Ask the Lord to make himself present with his grace and blessing. The following prayer, composed by St. Alphonsus Liguori in the 18th century, is a good model for your own prayer. O oh my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The Lord has risen and shown his light upon us, whom he has redeemed by his blood. Alleluia. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you for sharing in our presentation of the Mass. The Mass is brought to you as a service of Catholic Life Television, a ministry of the Diocese of Baton Rouge. Your participation, your prayers, and your support make this ministry possible. We'd like to hear from you. Please write us at Catholic Life Television, Post Office Box 3015, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70821.